Welcome to the latest episode of This Week's Hacker, sponsored by Skybet Hacker Freeze. I'm Tom, joined by Jake and Jimmy as ever to deliver our selections. It's a midweek action. We'll be looking through the EFL on Tuesday, the Champions League as well, picking out our hacker in the usual format. As ever, let us know your thoughts in the comments all through Sporting Life Football social media channels. And remember to keep it fun. Never bet more than you can afford. This podcast is 18 plus. Please gamble responsibly. I don't know what happened over the weekend. Uh, we'll talk football shortly. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, this all looks different. We the studio's know. changed yes. massively. That's there. There's sofas in here now. The desks have gone. Can you guess the stadium? Uh, it looks quite generic. Is it? I think it's a football stadium. Yeah, I'm going with Jim Rod on this. Is it a <laughs> South American one? It is an AI-generated stadium. Yeah. So it, was a, it was a trick question. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Mm. Were you responsible for the studio move? Yes. I thought it was you, Jim Rod. You've, uh, You've been working overtime this the weekend. Way, no, not really. No? We'll decorate it more next week for the next episode. So, It'll yeah. be a bit more decorated and stuff like that. But that's uh, a little push there in a subtle way to watch the podcast on YouTube if you don't <laughs> already. So that's good, isn't it? Um, good. On really the good. football, we were saying this before we came in. Last week's Saka, five selections, three, one, two losses. Weird, weird weekend in terms of some results, right? The, a lot of top teams lost. I said Portsmouth for one of mine. It got decoyed. They lost 4-0 at home to Blackpool. Not many saw that come in. Uh, we did. Sa yeah, we did. Southampton <laughs> held by Huddersfield. Yeah. Ipswich lost to West Brom. Leeds held at Rotherham in the Championship. Mansfield. Mansfield. Losing in there. Leeds. Reading got their first points away from home, which was the other one we were on. What the cool. hell was Saturday and Sunday, Friday as well? Action all about. Weird weekend. Very yeah. weird. I'll let you go because you've got a few notes, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> my notes, I mean, he's literally written down those teams that you just said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, someone someone must have had the, a ridiculous sort of long shot over the weekend going against all the unbeaten teams. I know someone out there's done that, but it was it was a strange one. And, and we were saying about the teams uh, on these massive winning streaks, it's just not sustainable in the Football League, is it? And it's just weird how it's throwing them all up at, at the once. At the same time, yeah. yeah it's, it's mad. Well, Rotherham are the big one. that They are down there. The managerial change. They've got points at home to Leeds, Ipswich and Southampton, I think, already. So if that doesn't sum up the championship, <laughs> then I don't know what does. Um, what a sport. Usually read out comments at this point, but I'm only going to read one this week. Technically two, because I just love it so much. Uh, you know, people who got twice. involved. Um, Brian Bennett got in touch on YouTube saying, love an affair, glad I found you. We'll be looking forward to next week's show and then all corrected it to say, Aka, predictive spelling. So I'm not sure if he's you know, <laughs> covered himself or it is a genuine one there. But uh, as I say, we're on YouTube. Check us out there as well. I want to get straight into this week then. Not too much dwelling, yeah. you know, reflecting on last week's. Into this week, we're focusing on Tuesday games. I think it's fair to say, as we usually do on the midweek uh, to kind of throw back to a comment or a question someone asked previously, we do Tuesday just because there's more games, right? We don't like the cross-day ones. There's just more games to go at on the Tuesday. We've got six in the championship. I think we've got full League One and League Two, maybe, and the usual slate of Champions League as well to go at. Who would like to kick us off? Is there anyone? We were in too much agreement on Saturday, for, for Thursday for Saturday, by the way, so I want some controversy this week. Ooh. You're the man for controversy. Just looking, we've both. You looking at my notes yeah. again? That's exactly what I'm Right, you two joint together. Okay. And say this and pitch it to me and I'll see if I like it as well. Ready? Talk to me about the You're first team three. in unison. <laughs> after the counters in then. Okay. <laughs> three, two, one. Doncaster. Coventry. Right. <laughs> right. Um, Coventry, yeah. Coventry. I was going to say you Doncaster, were. absolutely not. But Coventry, talk to me. Yeah, I've got this one down as well. Really? Yeah. You said no, not too much agreement. I'm well, this is fine. We can agree on this one. There's going to be other ones we don't agree on. I, I knew this would be a team that we're going to get bought up and lightly included. You can do the explainers. You kicked us off. One of you. You said Coventry. I said Doncaster. So. Someone tell me why we're <laughs> Coventry. Come on, let's go. All right, right. Come on, right, on tell me why we want Coventry to beat Plymouth. <laughs> they are playing at home. Coventry, they've just been unfortunate this season. Eighth for big chances created and third for... Big chances missed, so just tells you about the poor fortune in front of goal. They're underperforming their XG, stuff like that. All the interesting data, blah, 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 blah. Plymouth, terrible away from home. 
Uh, do not travel well. Only Wednesday and Rotherham taken fewer points on the road. Eight games, five defeats. Pretty much it. The only niggling bit of doubt I have is, I know Coventry have been unfortunate, but it does look a touch short. But then again, it's one of them that I think is there just enough juice in the price. And I do think they'll win. So, Yeah. Uh, just to add a bit more to the data as opposed to the blah, 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 blah that Jim Rod went with. Um, I did like that. I liked so it I just well. Instantly, good. I could just get on board of it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they sit 19th in the table, the cough, but they're actually sixth based on expected goals process this season, which is probably the biggest disconnect between actual and expected position across the um, well, English football at this moment in time. They've won the non-penalty XG battle in 13 of their 17 league games this season. Um, and at home, the record is 1-2, drawn 5, lost 1, but they've won that non-penalty XG battle in 5 of their 8. So they're really unfortunate not to have got more positive results. Um, you know, they, they should be full of confidence. They absolutely hammered Millwall at Millwall, 3 nil at the weekend. Um, and yeah, like you said, Plymouth away from home, winless. We, we know that they're a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde team. They're really strong at home. They beat Sunderland team that are, you know, pushing for playoffs again. Uh, they beat them 2 nil at the weekend. But they're yet to win the non penalty XG battle away from home. So they've been consistently out-created when travelling. Uh, and I think this is a good spot for Coventry to maybe get, a, a, you know, another win under the belt, climb away from that relegation to places. And, and they're not miles away from the playoff picture. I mean, you probably have to put a bit of a run together to get in, but you know, it's not out the realms of possibility that Mark Robbins now has got a bit more of a settled side. They had a lot of changes, didn't they, in the summer. They might be able to make a bit of a run. They've adapted to those changes really, really well as well, because it's losing one key player or whatever. It's losing two prolific scorer, who I think in Portugal is absolutely flying it's again. It up. Yep. Gustavo Harmer as well. You were delighted when that happened and he went to the Blades. Um, Ways for Harmer to go there, by the way. <laughs> I think... Back in the champ next year. So what, yeah. what are they currently in terms of points difference to the top six? Because there's a long, long way to go in the championship and there's always one team who has a really good charge through the yeah, second half of the season. Yeah. Nottingham Forest were the most, yeah. probably best example of this in recent years, that they really just... Flew into the playoffs. It was nine points. The Aston Villa did the same. I think when they went up, they were on a brilliant run of form going into the playoffs. They then won it. Sunderland did it last year, didn't they? They finished really strongly. Yeah, nine nine points is the gap currently. Yeah. So it, if Cov can if Cov can start to balance this out a little bit and start to convert the chances they've got, yeah, it could be. Well, they look, they look, could be the top sixteen potentially. Just looking at well the results. Open. I mean, the reason they're not higher is the too many draws. Like they've lost the same amount of games as Cardiff, who were seventh. Um, but they've just they Cardiff have turned more of their uh, their draws into wins. So yeah, that middle of the championship table so congested, congested. It's just so congested. tight, isn't it? It's it's always like that. So yeah, you you only need to string a couple of results together to really climb the table. We happy with Coventry then? Because I've got this. I don't feel like I need to add anything else. I literally wrote Coventry in a false position. Plymouth aren't great away from home. That's the detail of why I kind of thought it. Yeah. I think. Having said I want disagreement, I think we're all in unison. <laughs> um, they are four to six-ish, correct, uh, on that one on Coventry. No issue for me putting these. Should we just say they're the first Acker selection and move on? Oh, Lock it yeah. in. Lock it in then. First Acker selection on this week's Acker. We're taking Coventry to get a home win against Plymouth in the Skybet Championship. In the excitement of our agreement, I usually bring a quiz question to this podcast, don't I? And I was just so excited that we yet again are in agreement. I forgot to ask it in the first section. So before we move on, do you want the quiz question now? And you can start to shoot yeah. a potential answer. I'll be honest, uh, I like this one so much, I kind of just stole it from the Premier League graphic on Saturday. Um, the question for this episode, Lewis Miley? Millie? Mm -hmm. Miley? Newcastle's registered an assist in Newcastle's 4-1 win over Chelsea on Saturday. That made him the sixth youngest assist maker in Premier League history. Who is the youngest? That's the question that I will ask you in your first clue of the episode. It happened in 2003. Oh, Jesus. So there you go on times of kind of roughly where it was. 20 that's, years ago. Yeah, that's scary, isn't it? That's scary. That is scary. 2003. So that's the quiz question. Back to this week's hacker. We... So far, have Coventry to beat Plymouth at four to six. I'm going to chuck one in because I want a bit of controversy, a bit of debate, and I know you'll probably disagree with me oh, on this one. What do you think I'm going to say? Reading. No. Uh, no, no, no. no, no, no. Although, who are Reading playing? 
Monte Carlo. Carlo. Right, we might come back to them. Could revisit. I've glanced over that one. <laughs> Cardiff to beat West Brom. 17 Ooh. to 10. 8 to 5 type territory this game. Wow. Very much a pick 'em. Both sides priced similar. The bookmakers aren't too sure on this one. I quite like, again, here I go on my Cardiff at home type thing, uh, but I do quite like siding with a team yeah. who have got a pretty solid home record. They had that huge win over Preston, didn't they? They were losing in the 95th minute. They turned around and won that game 2-1. That, the opposite happened in the previous game against Norwich. Very odd, isn't it? And Norwich are, I, I, I don't know, maybe a scientist or a uh, someone who's clever and probably study <laughs> Norwich and go right this shouldn't be working but somehow it is because we thought it was game over for them they've pulled two wins out of the bag I think it's not changed massive opinion but back to Cardiff for me it's more on the West Brom side of things that West Brom at the Hawthorns have been superb under Carlos Corberan superb got a win against Ipswich didn't they last time out as well six wins from nine at home just one home loss but then you look away and they're not quite replicating that, as you'd expect, because they're obviously, you know, fifth is it in the table. Two wins from eight, three defeats in that. And when I was kind of looking at who they have dropped points to at home, particularly, who are the teams that have managed to get some success about them? Huddersfield, Plymouth, Millwall. The thing that stands out to me was they were three of the more direct teams in the league. I'd probably put Cardiff around that category, not to an extreme, but in terms of where they play and wanting to get the ball up the pitch quite quickly, I'd probably put Cardiff with those three teams. Now, I remember this being an issue with Bielsa's Leeds, watching a lot of them in the championship. That against direct teams, this is where it came unstuck. Corbiran, while not a direct replica of that team, massive influence, that's obviously the coach he worked under. Potentially, that is their sticking point against teams who are probably a bit more direct. But for me, for, for all those reasons, West Brom haven't quite replicated away from home. I like Cardiff's home form, even with a couple of results. The QPR one, they should have won. Norwich, just, I don't, I don't understand them. I don't think anyone does at the moment. 17 to 10, I'd like to bring them to the table as a, we add them in, boost it up. You can have a couple of shorter price ones later on because I really, really like this as a selection. And what is a pick em type game? If it was the other way around, nowhere near, I'd be going West Brom. But on the road, I just just like Cardiff. I like Cardiff in this one for a variety of reasons. I Have I talked either of you around? In a word, no. Right, okay. In a word, no. Sorry. Um, <coughs> just looking through the data, even Cardiff at home, the results have been good. Process has not been great. Um, they actually got a negative XG process at home. Which, and it's only slightly better than Sheffield Wednesdays, which I think is... I, I was really surprised to see that. I don't know if that says Cardiff had been bad or Wednesday had been perhaps a little bit unfortunate. Um, but yeah, they're, they're basically creating and conceding at a similar rate, Cardiff. So I definitely think this has got draw written all over it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going against West Brom. I don't care how smooth you are, Duff, man. I don't want them in... I just think... I do, it, the thing for me, I wonder if there is an issue playing teams who have the ability to go slightly more direct. This might be the sticking point for them. That, that's the one thing that kind of stands out to me. And in those home games as well, I'm just quickly looking through them here, they always score first, Cardiff. So against Norwich, OK, Norwich was the outlier, which they lost. But against Bristol City, they scored in the first half. Watford, they scored in the first half. Coventry, they scored in the first half. Swansea was a bit of a different game, didn't it? But Tanner came on and changed that game. So a lot of the time, they're scoring the first goal. They're scoring either the first or they're scoring early which inevitably means that the opposition then are going to have to come on to them, have more of the chances. Maybe that's explaining the data point on that one. And the maybe. two games that they have lost, weirdly QPR scored first, Norwich scored first, so maybe if you do score first, it's different. But First goal wins. Maybe yeah, this is one they, are, we... they are scoring first and, and seemingly then, when they do, they are going on and getting results. Maybe this is one where we don't put it in the acker, but we say that this is, could be a good opportunity to use an acker freeze. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're doing, we're doing to him what you always do to me. <laughs> like, well done, Jim Rod, but we're not letting it anywhere near our Acker. Really? To be fair, at 17 to 10, you know what? Well, on that. Please, please keep it away from That's me. a great point. You know what? When we put the long list out and we back them, I'm going to back the four or five that we pick. I'm going to chuck Cardiff in and I'm going to gamble on them scoring That's first. Good, yeah. Half hour in, I'm just going to freeze it and take it and then just hope the other four or five it. deliver. That's exactly, especially if you've got a team like that who, like you said, they've got a good record at home. They 
generally take the lead quite regular at home. That's a good opportunity to use it. Yeah, game. Jim Rodston. Really good try, buddy. Thanks <laughs> for your contribution, but Jim Rod's done the Apu from the Simpsons. Now you know how it fits. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's why I bought that one here, because I, I wanted to bring it up as, you know, it's potentially there as a bigger price one. Jim Rod, then, go on. Bring yeah, one to me. the big ones on the corner. Yeah, you can, you can give one. And yeah. The annoying thing is, you can put one I've got here, and I'm going to have to feel dutifully obliged to go, <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um, I just think that, that was silly. That was ridiculous three minutes. Should have cut him off way earlier. <laughs> uh, Blackpool, four to seven. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, get me. Yeah. Here's the plan. Northampton. Oh, I, I just think they're a good team now. It took a while for Critchley to manoeuvre him into, do you know what I mean, in, into w what he wants again. And, and I think he's done that now. The result of the weekend proves it, proves it really, doesn't it? Massive eye open at that. Big that time. was the... OK. All right, now. We've paid attention to Blackpool, obviously. We seemingly... Sorry to interrupt, but a lot of the time, oh, Blackpool are the team on this podcast. That when they're at home, we always look at them away. Maybe there's value elsewhere, but... Carry on. I'll let you. I'll let you continue. Yeah. Uh, I was saying to uh, James Cooper on the Friday. He was saying, "I'm going to get Rocket Science on Sport and Life." If Rocket you wanted Science, to yeah. read that, there's a plug. Friend Carry of the on. pod. <laughs> I was saying if you, he wanted to get on Blackpool playoffs, and I was like, "Well, if I were you, I'd wait until after this Portsmouth game because they, they probably they probably won't win." <laughs> <laughs> and then battered them four yeah. nil. The price has absolutely crashed. It's now a tenth yeah. of what it was after that. <laughs> And I don't think that result was aided massively by uh, Joe Morrell's red card because they were already two 0 up at the time yeah. and playing brilliantly. So, but at that point, it did seem as well that, like I say, that they weren't deserving of not being ahead. At yeah. that point, it just was pretty much the sealer that they're definitely going to win the game. Yeah, that's what I thought. Exactly, exactly. Um, Northampton lost their last four on on the road as well. Don't know tons about the club, but just based on based on the form. A lot of red in there. Joe Townsend will be back on this pod very soon. Uh, but he knows a lot about Northampton, so where the hell is he? Uh, if you where could is he when comment in and let us know his thoughts on Northampton, that would be yeah, ideal yeah. if he could. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm all on board with this, to be honest. Looking at some of the teams that Northampton have lost away to. Derby, God knows what you expect on that. Bristol Rovers, Bolton, Shrewsbury. Good mix in there of teams that some are up there, some aren't. You yeah. were in agreement on Blackpool when Jim Rod said it? Massively on board, yeah. Um, They've played a tough schedule of late, which we touched upon when we backed them to beat Shrewsbury at home. Um, Battered them, didn't they? That yeah, they, they've, since then, obviously, they've, they've had Shrewsbury, they've had Portsmouth, so it's not got much easier. Um, third best home team on the data. And, yeah, just the results at home. Um, it's not bad, six out of ten, but they're unbeaten against the bottom half, which I think is quite key. They, they're basically, they've won five of their seven against the bottom half, where Northampton currently sit. Northampton... Their two away wins have come against Exeter in 20th and Cheltenham in 23rd. Um, yeah, they, they've won the last two. Both have come at home. This is a bit of a step up. And the two wins have come against Burton 17th, Cambridge 16th. Blackpool definitely, to me, are looking more and more like that playoff calibre team. This should be... You know, it's a great opportunity to rack up a third successive win and, uh, and really make another bit of a, another statement. We've got a couple of big games coming up. But that price looks a little bit too big I think they should maybe be around one to two something like that so yeah I think that's a solid shout yeah four to seven look at this one what's the biggest surprise for you here Jim Rod that they won four nil at the Jordan Rhodes didn't get any of the four <sighs> Jordan He's Rhodes absolutely who, ex who expected this kind of return to form for a 33 year old striker now it's unbelievable absolute delight to watch isn't it he for must be one of them a pure confidence striker because pure confidence pure pure <laughs> confidence because when, when he's not scoring, he is really not scoring. <laughs> I mean, no way. And when he's not? scoring, he, he's really scoring. scoring. That's some hell of an insight there. <laughs> <laughs> he's not scoring, he's not scoring. When he's scoring, though, by God, does he scoring. By goals. God, does he kick it in the goal. 10 in 15 for Jordan Rhodes this season. Yeah, Three assists with that as well. He actually has slowed up a little bit, but then got one in that hammering of Shrewsbury. Um, there. Yeah, I'm, I'm on board with this. If... People are happy. Yeah, I know you brought it to the table, but yeah, I don't, I don't hate this to be honest. Four to seven, the double would currently be just above five to two ish. No, six to four ish. Uh, no, let me work this out. Let me actually add it to the bet slip, and That'd then I'll good, get yeah, some yeah. maths for you there. One point six to one currently. So yeah, we're eight a bit short at the moment. Yeah, so we're floating around the eight to five marker. Um, 
it's all right. We've got a couple. Got, so we got some other ones to discuss. I think these two are lock in selections, right? I, yeah. I can't see why we would go away from Blackpool. I didn't have it down originally, but definitely yep. it was on the radar. Lock Happy? Yep. Cool. Right then. Fair enough on this one then. The double so far that we have. We have Coventry to beat Plymouth in the Skybet Championship. We have Blackpool to beat Northampton in Skybet League One. Yeah, I think that's a pretty nice double at the moment. We will take a quick break and we'll be back discussing third, fourth, potentially fifth selections next. <gasps> one thing we've all got in common is having that one leg of an Acker let us down. From spending your winnings in your head to cursing that last minute equaliser that broke your heart. But it doesn't have to be that way. Acker Freeze from Skybet gives you the power to freeze a winning score early. Even if that team goes on to lose, Skybet will settle it as a winner. It's time to take action. It's time to Acker Freeze and end the game your way. Visit skybet.com for full terms and conditions. I should have given you the quiz question there before we had the little Akafri's break. Uh, so you could have really had a little think about it. So sorry about that. But I'll give you the second clue for this now. Uh, the question was, Lewis Miley, I should have really learned how to pronounce his surname at some <laughs> point during one of these breaks, registered an assist. Melee. Melee. Yeah, registered Melee. an assist in Newcastle's 4-1 win over Chelsea on Saturday, making him the sixth youngest assist maker in Premier League history. I wanted you to tell me who is the youngest. First clue was it happened in 2003. Uh, the second one is he made over 400 Premier League appearances capped by England as well. I was thinking of giving you the number of caps, not England. but oh. I thought if I tell you the exact number of caps, it might give it away or a steal. I'm furious because... Capped by England. Those clues, me and Jake were conferring during the break. Yeah, those clues have not eliminated your guess. I think and you just has. said it's not him then. And that's really riled me that I think. <laughs> <laughs> Over 400. It, it could still be him. Over 400 Premier League appearances and he's been capped by England as well. playing? Well, I'm not going to tell you that. Come on. That's my, that's my I'm going to tell you that. He wouldn't say 400 appearances if you were still playing, would he? He's, yeah, but he, he's devious. You've got to watch stuff, man. He'd still be playing. He's he, trying to trip you he up. He could still be around the football picture. He could not. Yeah, um, back to the football. Can I kick this section off? Yeah, a that's really controversial one. Absolutely. Getting amongst it. Put Vale, no. 11 to 4 at home to Derby. No. So you know that spiel you just gave no. Tom about, you know. God, no. You can give me an explanation time. here, but I. It. <clears throat> Do we want an explanation? I. Uh, Have we said on this podcast previously that we stay away from games involving Stoke? Can I also pitch this for Derby County? How can you predict anything on. This Derby team. Yeah, for the last five, you know. That's exactly what I'm thinking, Duffman. They are unpredictable, aren't they? They're yeah, just but unpredictable. That, so they I don't want to include them in an option market where there's three potential outcomes. And I'll give you... <laughs> we're taking one of the outcomes on the no, most no, unpredictable no. team did, on the did planet. you know that Port Vale are in the worst form of any team in the league across the last ten matches? They have not won in 10. Ah. They've got three points from those 10 games. So absolutely no way are we backing them at 11 to yeah. 40. This is where Jim Rod comes in and floors the entire thing. with They are line. due a win. <laughs> it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. I'll set them up for you. You knock them out of the park. Jeez. Just look at the, the recent wins, though. They beat Burton. In what the Bale cup. haven't won in the league in 10? They beat Mansfield in the Cup. <laughs> I like how he just don't care. He's not listening. No, you're not having it. <laughs> no, because you stopped <laughs> mid-argument. You've kind of gone. I think you can tell from your tone you're not really believing in this either now. I, I didn't make any notes on this. I just saw the price and I thought, <laughs> let's have it. Chuck it out. The right, OK. No, um, I, I, the, the thinking is it's just Derby's unpredictable nature. And I'm, I'm on board with that part. So I do not know what the hell to expect from this Derby team. Mm -hmm. and to back this up, they drew at Crewe in the FA Cup, didn't they? And they lost They've lost. They lost at Stevenage, lost at Shrewsbury. There was Shrewsbury. a draw at Cheltenham as well. Shrewsbury, one of the worst teams I've seen this season. Shrewsbury good at home, though. Um, I don't know how. Me neither. Shrews. I don't really get it. But how can you Shrewsbury back a team dingers. that's not won in 10 league games? Simple. With money. <laughs> <laughs> can I right, present Reading Football Club away at Wickham? <laughs> no. I, I want to see a bet slip from you. I'll go, go, go like this. I'll go in to the bookmakers. I'll say, hello, hello, Mr. <laughs> Bookman. I'd like to have Port Vale, please. And he'll go, how much, sir? And I'll say, such and such amount. And then I'll get a slip in return. And you'll never see that money again. And I'll show it, yeah. yeah. You know what? I wasn't even going to have it, but now I am. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm just going to... I'll buy you something when they win. You know what? I might, I, you know what? Just on... Yeah. I might... Backport. Why do we I'll all back? Them in. Why would you back Paul <laughs> Vale yeah, on our own, That's right? And we'll all just enjoy it as a single and just roar it on and hope it happens. Yeah. Jake, give me one we can actually put in the hacker, please. <laughs> okay. I did enjoy that little part there. Um, Barrow at home to Wolves. So. Yeah, Barrow. I noticed I had these. Unbeaten at home, four wins, four defeats. Uh, not the easiest schedule, though. They've played second place Wrexham, sixth place Notts County, Morecambe in 12th, Wimbledon 8th, Crawley 11th. So five of the eight home games have come against top half teams. Underlying process is improving at home. Won the non-penalty XG battle in six of their eight home games, which I know you love, Jim. That's the real quiz. <laughs> Uh, and Walsall winless in five league games away from home lost five of the nine and four of the five against top half teams just in my head I just Im I don't know why but I'm just imagining you know Kevin Keegan's rant yeah 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 he's, got, he's like I would love it they've got to go there and win the non-penalty <laughs> HG battle and I would love it if they did if they lost the HG battle that is uh, yeah we should we should recreate that sketch properly and get you to do that <laughs> um, yeah and yeah, you'll also like uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's just Walsall are in really bad form, put it simply, and Barrow are flying at the moment. Really uh, strong at home. Yeah, this is, that's basically what it is down for me. I had Barrow down. I was surprised by the fact that it's near enough even money. We're just shy of that. Barrow have been really good at home. I tried to back them uh, against them at home when Morecambe went there in pretty good form. They beat Morecambe, who were in good form uh, since then. It's just continued as it is. And just in general, Barrow are in, are in good form. They beat Bradford, didn't they? They hammered Colchester as well. And the Michael Beardmore, who you all have read his previews on sportlife.com, I think he's probably the best pool player in the office on eighth floor pool. Ooh, you've been upset Ben Coley there. Yeah, and he's, Jim Rod. Uh, yeah, Jim Rod's really improved on the pool scene. You <laughs> Most improved. Most genuinely. And that's not even just to give the lad an award. Like, he couldn't <laughs> hit a ball when he first turned up here. Now wow. he's beaten some of us. Not all of us. Uh, he tweeted, Michael goes to basically every Warsaw game, right? He put 18th in League 2, this is what he put on x.com, for, formerly Twitter, to give it its full name. Uh, 18th in League 2 seems to be become an incredibly saddening, repetitive experience as a Warsaw fan in recent years. To the extent you're almost relieved it isn't lower, will there ever be optimism when we exit this godforsaken division via the more positive route? He's, he's That's probably a summary of where Warsaw are at the moment. Someone who's watching them every week is going, this is just horrible. Yeah. Is the is the will the misery ever end? Is what we're getting to here. I'm all on board with this. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> to Barrow isn't exactly what you want at the moment when you're in that sort of form. Jim Rod, are you on board with this at 19.20? I like it a lot at the prices, and it takes. If we included it, the treble goes above four to one. So we're in a nice little boosting territory here. Yeah, I know Barrow haven't lost in the league since. <laughs> door, keeps going on door keeps going in the studio, know. doesn't it? <laughs> Carry on, as you were, Barrow. But I know Barrow haven't lost since the start of October in the league. It's one of them where I don't know tons about... They drew it, by any chance. The, well, well, they drew one. <laughs> they all drew one. It's like, I don't know, I'm not going to blag it, but I don't know tons about the clubs, but just looking at the form, uh, Barrow do seem to live in the realms of fine margins a bit. Obviously, they won 4-1 at the weekend, but the goals... For the the three goals there was winning 2-1 at Colchester all the goals come at the three goals they were drawing 1-1 one, one, and then the three goals came after the red card 86, 93rd, 94th minute and you trying to coin this phrase accurable an accurable not side not said it all podcast you, uh, yeah go on you said it every Thank other you week for it. thanks for bringing accurable. it up accurable 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 sounds better doesn't it but accurable flow is better well, on the flip side, they, they just make me a bit nervous, a team like Barrow. You know, when they're not really blowing any teams out of the water. And you always remind me, like, when I say, well, they only won by one. And you go, yeah, they still won. <laughs> but just That's if exactly we're having what I sound like. four or five teams. <laughs> <laughs> if we're having four or type, five teams. Like, you know a team who, who doesn't blow other sides out of the water? It just doesn't make me that comfortable. Yeah. But like I say... Mm, I think I'm, this is a good I'm, game for them, though, because Walsall... Like I said, they've, they've lost four of the five against top half teams away from home, and they've conceded multiple times in all five. So I think yeah. Barrow will score at least twice, given the way in which Walsall are going. And let's be honest, Barrow's defence has been excellent, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So we need to give them the respect they deserve. Cause Barrow's, Barrow's losses have been Stockport, Mansfield, and Grimsby all away. And they were Grimsby's the outlier there. The Mansfield one nil. Mansfield one nil. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Drew at home at Wrexham. Drew at home to Notts County. Drew away at Accrington. Drew at home to Wimbledon. 
So against the top eight, you can say, yes, they've not won, but they've only lost two of those six. Against the rest of the division... They've feasted. They're, they're beating everyone. And yeah, it might be one goal. And obviously the Colchester game at the, the weekend was a bit of the outlier there in terms of the final result. But it's basically a case of not really losing against those around them and easily beating, or not easily, but beating those who are below them, of which Warsaw are well in that group of teams that are down there that, that they're beating at the moment. Yeah, I think you've been one round, haven't you? I, I'd want this in just on a price point. I think this is the, the near even money shout that, again, there's always a couple every weekend that you go, I, 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 why, sure? why, why is this the price that it, that it is? At the moment, um, let's just like we, we backed Barrow um, a couple of weeks ago against Crawley, and Crawley were and they went off at ten to eleven. And Crawley are a better team than Warsaw for my money. So yeah, Warsaw have conceded four at Wrexham, conceded two at Mansfield, conceded two at Crew, as well. So the top teams when they've gone away, they've been conceding goals. I'm all on board with this. Kid in. The only other thing, the price you keep quoting is a shade of odds on, isn't it? But. Yeah. They are available at 21 to 20 with Coral now. Yeah, are they drifting? No, no, that, I got that price down. Oh, have you? She's using Skybet for Basically, the, the, this, this is the point, though, no, that they're around the even. No, what I'm saying is, why aren't they 8 to 11 or something like that? When you look at the rest of the slate and some of the other results there, wherever you go, and that if you're getting around 19 to 20 is a great price, I think, on this. I'd love, I think this is, we need this in the Acker as a booster. Need it in. It's a home team again. Yeah, we love it. It's a team that, that aren't in great form at the moment. Should you have them in? Fine, get them in. Fine then, there we go. The third selection of this week's ACA joining Coventry and Blackpool. We're taking Barrow for a home win against Walsall. We've got one result in every division so far, the FL, which is nice, isn't it? It is lovely. Maybe we should go to Europe next. Mm. No? Yeah. We'll talk about Europe anyway very shortly. It's Champions League midweek. I want to talk about them. Um, PSG 8 to 13 to beat Newcastle. Yes, yes, mm. yes, yes, yes. It's funny you should say because I was chatting with uh, Linad and I was saying, is there any way we can get Newcastle inside it? It was 9 to 2, it's 20. It's, it's, it's changed a little bit. I know they've got a load of injuries, but they had their. I don't know if Eddie Howe, I feel like he's actually a pretty good manager. <laughs> <laughs> do you reckon? And, yeah, and, and if PSG are going to do this approach where they just let Mbappe and Dembele cheat again, like Eddie Howe showed in the reverse that he can absolutely take them to the cleaners. PSG, ha PSG have to win this game, though. This is like Newcastle, Newcastle, have, Newcastle, to Newcastle have to win. Newcastle have to win. Have to win. I get that, but. Good death, babe. Everyone needs to win every game. <laughs> then you think Newcastle's away performances in the competition. They lost at Dortmund. They've obviously since lost to Bournemouth in the other away game. At Milan, at the San Siro. I know they had a, a great chance at the end to win it, and it would have been an ultimate yeah. smash and grab, which would have been phenomenal. Would you would have loved that on if you're a travelling fan on your return yeah. to the Champions League. But away from home, the performances have not been great. It really is a case of at St James's Park, they're unbelievable. Against all odds, against everything, against the injury crisis and everything... And yet they go away and the results aren't quite the same, which I know feels weird as they're beating a team 8-0. But particularly in Europe when they're playing yeah, other top teams in a tough group and now this is the hardest team to play. Is it? Yes, they had the great results in James Park, but away from home against a team I think have won the last six at home now. Kept five clean sheets during that period as well. Got a load of goals as well. As you'd expect from a stacked attack. 20 goals in those six they've scored. To me, this feels like a, an inclusion of any to any game you kind of look on the Champions League on Tuesday night. This is probably if you said pick one home team to include, not Man City because they're a short price or one to three marker as you'd expect. I'd instantly be looking at PSG to beat Newcastle. Uh, is that price just a little bit disrespectful to Newcastle? Though? Yeah, that's what I'm. That is exactly what I'm thinking. I know they've got injuries, I know they've not travelled too well, but at the weekend, like they actually fielded a stronger team at the weekend than I was expecting. I thought that, that Isak would be out, um, he obviously raced back, Almiron was the same, who's a doubt. Um, yeah, I just think that's a little bit disrespectful. But then again, Newcastle have to go and open up against PSG, that's the problem, isn't it? Because they, they are bottom of the group. They need to. A draw is not enough for them. Yeah, but this is the and that means that game. PSG could get... I think get a draw is fine for them as well. Uh, but then they've got to beat Milan at home and hope that 
Dortmund and PSG don't draw and then they're out. Yeah, the, uh, anything less than a win leaves Newcastle in a pretty precarious position. Yeah. And they could miss you out look on at, Europa as well. Which you look at the group, they're bottom at the moment. Say a draw here takes PSG to seven. Milan are expected to beat Dortmund effectively then. Say Milan do beat Dortmund, you've got eight, seven, seven and four. Nothing's a gimme in this Group F. Is it? Is it Group F? Yeah, yeah you've nailed it. Jeez. Nothing's a gimme. Uh, would you be mm. shocked if Dortmund turned Milan over? A little bit. <laughs> Because they're Dortmund and I just, just yeah. don't ever trust them, ever. I don't trust them. I, I think this could be a basketball match, which scares me. I know, I know PSG have got better attackers, but I think Newcastle are a very functional, strong team um, and they could cause a few problems. So at that price, I'm happy to look elsewhere. Can we long list it? Can I have it on a long, long list? No. I'll, I'm happy to long list it, yeah. I don't want it anyway. Well, give me a long lister here, yeah. come on. I, I'm, I'm going to put it long list because I do think that the... I could see Newcastle getting exposed potentially if they have to go for it at a certain point in the game. But, yeah, I, di I didn't see a lot I liked in Europe. That's why I didn't make any notes whatsoever because I just looked at the prices, looked at the, s the slate, and there wasn't any team that stood out to me. The, the one that did was probably Milan, uh, even money, but even so, like Dortmund could easily, they, they only need a point. They go there, they could easily park the bus and make play difficult. So um, I want to get back to the EFL. Like, that's where the good stuff is. Go on then. MK Dons at home to Grimsby. Mm. Whichever selection you said I was going to do that. <laughs> a bit. Uh, yeah. Five to six we're talking. Um, since Mike Williamson took charge. One Mike three. Williamson. Iron Mike. Said. No, it's Mike Williamson. I said that. I don't worry. I, I it's did. Iron Mike. Okay, carry Iron on. Iron Mike for Tom. Uh, they've won three, drawn one, lost one in the league. Scored 11 goals. They've won both of the home matches. They've had a bit of a mixed bag in terms of opponents, but um, you know they, they're, they're within three points of the top seven. They're clearly improving. And if you look over the last four games, it's a very small sample size, but the last four games across League Two, they've actually ranked as the third best team on the underlying data, which kind of shows that positive trend. Um, and Grimsby, they are unbeaten in three. They've beaten Morecambe at home, who are probably one of the worst travellers in the league. And they've had two draws against the current bottom two. So that three-game unbeaten run is a little bit misleading, I think. Yet to win away from home, they've drawn four, lost five, lost all four against teams that are in that bottom, that in that top half. They've conceded eleven. I think MK Dons will end up being a top half team. Um, and yeah, their away form has been, at the process anyway, minus 0 0.6 expected goal difference. So on average, they concede, or they, yeah, they concede around 0 0.6 more xG than their opponents, which is a not a good recipe when travelling. So I like MK Dons. I like the way in which they're travelling. Like I said, they've won both at home games um, under Williamson. I think they're trend, trending in a really positive direction and can, can kind of use this as a, an, another game to get closer to that, that top seven. I don't know. I'm scared. I'll tell you why, because Grimsby this morning, 28 minutes ago as we were recording, got a new head coach in, so David Artel. telling me he's had about David Artel. 20 well, hours. But to this, is, this is the thing now, I, I, just, I just don't know. I yeah. don't know the uncertainty of it. Does it lift everyone? I, I don't... What about the travel as well? I, I like don't. Talking about travel. I just don't know. This is the, that's the only thing with me now. And under the caretaker guidance, it was Ben Davies, Sean Pearson. They weren't. I know they were playing bad teams. They weren't. Oh, garbage, they though. weren't losing though. It just feels a bit too uncertain for me now. I, I think the MK. If, if they hadn't, if they hadn't made this, a, if they hadn't made this appointment, I'd be all on board of it. And I'm not saying he's going to come in and tactically it, for Tuesday. I think. Probably in terms of the long term, it's a decent appointment and probably the best option that they had. But who is it, the gaffer? David Artel. So he's had really long spell at Crew, didn't he? For David about five, five, uh, five years at Crew, of which he got them up into League One, and from there, I think there's probably going to be an attacking mindset. But it's more the short term. Does it then lift everyone, and does everyone kind of go, okay, now maybe we're on a bit of an upward trajectory? Uh, yeah. from now on and there's a bit more confidence about them whether he's on the sideline or not I don't know for this one that's the only thing that puts yeah. just that's the doubt in my mind if I I don't know does the atmosphere improve massively now and it can't be a bad atmosphere around there at the moment because they've been well, picking up know. some points right at least they've not been like losing throughout this entire interim period you haven't been Grimsby it's always yeah. a bad atmosphere <laughs> <laughs> that's a shame uh, I'm going to stop you now uh <laughs> That so you don't like it. I don't. I, the price. Yeah. It's you know, too short of a price. I thought it should be shorter when I saw this price. Yeah. If if they had if the fourth favourites for the league pre-season. If they hadn't like that. If they hadn't made that appointment this morning, that that's just the thing that gets me that it 
does it lift everyone and does everyone kind of get on board with it and yada yada right? yeah yeah you got because you got to think psychologically like Grimsby pretty much down and out this new man will probably nip in to see the players come on lads come we on, can boys. do it you know and also but you got to think from the players point of view they're obviously they always fighting for their shirt but the the, the new manager, they're going to want to impress the new manager, basically. Yeah. But also on the flip side, like what was Grimsby's style of play before? Well, I think they lost all hope of anything by the end <laughs> of it under Paul Hurst. But you're uh, talking about this guy who's... There was, there was going to be essentially intensity. I think what Artel will bring is what they wanted originally. That's the question, though. Maybe. Because if, yeah, if, well. if he tries to play like a quite an expansive attacking style and they don't have the players, then MK Dons have got such quality at the top mm. end of the pitch. They'll pick him off. That's long term, though. I think, you know, build a team around Conte, people like that, that, you know, I, I, yeah. Nah, I have too much doubts. I have so many doubts. Oh, really? I think I Kim Rod does be as well. in person, though, after the debate. Yeah. If they hadn't, if literally, if they hadn't done that while we recorded, I would have been more on board of it. But I just don't like the psychological. Hey, this is why you should come on, lads. While we're recording. Oh, come on, yeah. lads, so we can do this. Any others that we could talk about that instead we could go, yeah, let's put these in. You got Unless we've got a bigger one, we're heading towards fivefold territory, by the way. Yeah. <gasps> like the last few. Um, are there any others that we could potentially include here? The one I did have, Wigan, fl to beat Fleetwood at home. Oh, not for me. Why not? Uh, Fleetwood are just one of those really tricky... Streaky Lee, isn't it? It's so tricky. Streaky Lee. I just think Wigan, uh, again, we've talked about the point deduction. They've won three of the last four at home. They've had back-to-back -back draws, but they were away in those games. We've spoke about Wigan before on this podcast and you look at the table you've got to factor in that they're not quite where they should be let me work out the table because I've not looked at it fairly recently in terms of their points deduction add eight on they would have 27 that would put them around Lincoln they'd be ninth in the league on this one it, it, again to me it just feels that you're getting six to five on them at the moment I beaten the last four away mm. into Barnsley last time and drew Mm. Wins at Reading and Cheltenham, teams near the foot, draw up there. They're only really beating bad teams that are down there. Yeah, we're going to, on the table, they're down there. I know you've just hit the points in that. False position there. Yeah, it's in the most literal sense. They, they are, they are 18. Without, without that points deduction, they're sat ninth from the table. And then I think it would be far more easier to win it over. Just For me, it's that was one that I did have as a... Not if we were struggling, but if there was one late on that we wanted a bit of a value bumper. And what I will say, maybe the, cl the clincher is, if you added these to the three we have, another home team, uh, it goes above 10 to 1 on a fourfold. Can I tell you a weird stat? No. Wigan rank as the worst home team in the league on expected goals. Not in the real world, though. No, but they actually rank as the <laughs> worst team, which probably explains the price, actually. If the, if, the date, if the underlying data was marginally better, they would probably be sure. What a fleet would away. Fleetwood away are, uh, where's that, 13th, 14th, 16th. 16th best away team according to the underlying data. So you've got two ships. Well, the 8th worst. Wigan, so Wigan, that. yeah, but who, who have Wigan Nine played first. at home? Wigan have had to play Portsmouth, Oxford, Peterborough, Barnsley at home already this season. So their home form could be explained by the fact that they've not played Burton, Port Vale, Exeter, Fleetwood, Carlisle, mm. Cheltenham, Reading. Fleetwood are the first team that they've played that are That's genuinely like test for them, down they? there. Everyone else, when you think, oh, okay, it's not been great, to be fair, they did beat Oxford, they did beat Peterborough, but they've played four teams at home already who are going to be in the playoff picture minimum. Charlton have had a little bit of a change, of course, as well. They played them post Appleton coming in so I think we can include them that there's what five of those home games five of the eight is it there are against teams that are going to be potentially in the playoff picture so that would be my counterpoint on that on it's been a tough schedule this is really you look at the other teams that played beat Shrewsbury at home beat Northampton at home beat Cambridge at home as well teams that are round them in the table literally obviously they should be a little bit higher up as we've discussed Against the teams that are bottom half, they've been winning. This is going to win you round, Oscar, this. Go on. Fleetwood have never beaten Wigan in the <laughs> league, ever. Historically. Historically. Which, I hate historical stats. I hate historical completely irrelevant. But you won me over. Side. It's on our side. Look at that. We can talk about it. They have had a really, really tough kind of home schedule. I mean, to be fair, they've played 
home and away, they play Bolton, Portsmouth, Oxford, Stevenage, Peterborough, Derby, Blackpool, Barnsley. Lincoln are the only team in the top I mean, half of the table they have not played yet. We've played 18 games already, so we've nearly got to the halfway point. We've yep. nearly played everybody. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, the argument of the, f the, um, the tough home, uh, home schedule is definitely probably the best I've heard for Wigan. This is, weirdly as well, this is the first time, so 28th of November, which is obviously Tuesday, they'll play Fleetwood. They then don't actually get what would be considered a easy home game again if you're looking at the table till just after Christmas when they play Carlisle. Yeah. So the, the back end, so they'll probably pick up some points come that second half of the season as well where they're probably a team to monitor, particularly at home, as I'm putting them forward now. But second half of the season, the fixtures do get a lot better. they obviously got Lincoln coming up as well. Coming Derby up. on Boxing Day. You know, they've not had an easy home run, and yet, to be fair to them, they've picked up some good points there. You include them here against the Fleetwood side who, OK, they've picked up, but let's be brutally honest, it couldn't have got too much worse. You add them to the Acker, it's 10-1, to 1, we shake hands, we get out of here. Or yes, we please. add a few more. God, you're greedy. I love it. Uh, I, think, I think I might be sold on the Fleet, on the Wigan angle. Hooray! Yeah, I am. I want them in. I, I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent confident on it, but I'm a lot more confident after hearing your guys' argument. So well done. Thank you. Yeah. It was the historical. That was. That, the, that was. That was the, the historical the stat for me. Yeah. Nailed it. Yeah. You've got a fact. Yeah. That's. I think the top line for me having a look at that. I knew they'd played some good teams already. I didn't realise the extent of the yeah, good teams yeah. that they've played. Yeah, uh, the fact they've not played any team below them in the table yeah. at home is um, is pretty big. And the only two wins have come against the bottom two. There we go. Away from home. Um, I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I'm coming round to it now. Like I said, I'm not massively confident, but I, I, I would definitely, you know, out of the stuff that we've said and we've put up. I'm That's a fourfold there that I like, 10 to 1. Do we want to be above 10 to 1? No, no, I'm happy with that. Can I interest you in Knox County at home to Crawley? No. no. Crawley lost four of eight, conceded eight. We said away. no, god damn it. <laughs> Notts County won seven of nine at home, only Mansfield uh, and Wrexham have beaten uh, them. Yeah, I don't know, Notts County are weird, aren't they? Do they beat everyone apart from the good teams? Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, I'd tell you why as well, because Crawley, and I've said many times before, I bat them to both get relegated and finish bottom, as a lot of people I think did at the start of the season. They've defied that and now I can't oh, really... you hate them. I can't get involved with them for that reason. I just have... Yeah, the, the away from home is the skewed pose them. Judgment of them is the thing. And I know they've been good at home and I, I kind of buy into that. But I think, yeah. No, I'm happy to get out of here. Wrap it up. We've, 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 no, I okay, just it. want to get out of here. We've done it. I like it. We've, I think this is, I, I like this as the fourfold. Yeah, me too. Because you've got to be like realistic with the. It's four home teams as well if you wanted, you know, a bit more confidence. Home team. Yeah, I, I really like home teams. I will probably be adding Notts County to make it a five as well. Good for personally. you. On my own account. You can do, if yeah. If it wins, I'll buy you yeah. something nice. Add Port Vale in. I'm Add Port Vale to be Derby. Port and Vail, you know. I'm not going in it. No. Um, have you, did you have any others to bring up just for the long list? Literally, no. no. Um, there were others that I'm kind of half eyeing up, but to be fair, I might just have a go on them as kind of singles, to be honest. Um, the other one I had was yeah, Doncaster. No. Yeah. That's interesting. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't go on. I think we've done it. I think that's it. I think that is our hacker for the week. Are we happy for midweek Tuesday action? Yeah. With the fourfold? Done? Before yep. we recap on it, I want you to answer my quiz question. Ooh. Before I let you get out of here, Jim Rod, because I know you're so desperate yeah, to. I'd put that before the last game. Lewis Miley registered an assist in Newcastle's 4-1 win over Chelsea on Saturday, making him the sixth youngest assist maker in Premier League Two history. Down, Who is the youngest? Thank you to the Premier League for tweeting this out, because I stole it straight from them. Uh, first clue was it happened in 2003. Second clue was he made over 400 Premier League appearances and capped by England. Made. It's past tense. He won the League Cup in 2008 and played for five clubs, I believe, during his career. Your third clue? Would you, would you like to have a guess, or do you want a fourth clue? Can I ask you, was it Birmingham who won the League Cup in 2008? It was not, it was no. 2010, I think. A bit later, yeah. 2008 League Cup. I think if I tell you this, you're probably going to get it. If you don't have it already, this fourth clue. Two guesses I got were Milner and Walcott. Interesting. My two guesses before the 2002 was Jose Baxter. Nice. That's a good throwback, yeah. 
And then I've just put Gareth Barry. Fair enough, you've chucked that out. Uh, fourth one, he, he had a spell in Turkey. One point, but he's best associated with a lengthy period at Tottenham. Tottenham. Not got it? I thought that would be the one that might get it. Any guesses? Won the league. He's a winger. 21 caps for England it was in total. He, I think he's, he's only about mid-30s. I think he has retired now because he was playing up until about, in the Premier League until about 2022, maybe. I was just thinking him. Is that what you are thinking? I was thinking Lennon, yeah. Would you like, oh, there you go. Uh, Jim Rod, go on then, you were first in. Would you like to give us the answer to the question? Aaron Justin Lennon. <laughs> nice middle name. It is indeed Aaron Lennon, 16 years, 199 days. He assisted a goal in Leeds' defeat to Arsenal at Ellen Road in November 2003. Who did uh, from Turkey? I don't know. Turkish team, I think. Turkish team. Apparently, Turkey. his diet was terrible. All he wanted to eat was chicken nugget and chips at Leeds. And they had to work really hard to get his proper nutrition in. <laughs> oh, go for a Big Mac, but they are tasty, aren't they? They're uh, de flipping delicious. Second, do you, do you know who was second in the list? I'm surprised this wasn't a guess. You know, second in the Wayne list. Rooney? Wayne Rooney. Yeah, he previously had it August yeah, 2002 yeah, yeah, yeah. when he was 16 years, 297 days. So Lennon did it by about 100 days. So there's your answer for the quiz question. Another one of those on Thursday. More importantly, though, this week's ACA. We have settled on the fourfold that is just above 10 to 1 uh, at the moment, pre boost. It's an all EFL occasion, even though there's Champions League. We've largely ignored that one. We have Coventry to beat Plymouth. We have Blackpool to beat Northampton. We have Barrow to beat Warsaw. We have Wigan to beat Fleetwood as well. I like that one because it's four home teams involved. And as ever, remember to keep it fun. Never bet more than you can afford. Please gamble responsibly. So make sure you get in touch with us on social media. Search Sporting Life Football. You'll be able to find us that way. And head over to sportinglife.com forward slash football. You'll be able to find the link to back that one at an enhanced price for the Tuesday games. And if you haven't already, please follow us and rate us on iTunes, Spotify, or your chosen podcast provider. We will be back on Thursday. <laughs>